And uh, for the first time, some Christians out there have been making response videos to my, you know, um, to my videos. And I, I think that's kind of cool. It got, I, I feel... I feel um, like I'm, I'm for reals now. I'm authentic. I'm a real atheist now. So I want to share with you these guys. One of the things is, of course, what they've done, as you can obviously understand, is they saw my video, they disagreed with it, and they decided they needed to put me in my place. We're going to, this is the, if you will, podcast, I guess. During this video, I, you know, as I told you guys, I go. don't want to, like, Make my videos and pretend to like be happy and stuff like when i'm having a bad uh day with my symptoms so the depression was really bad and so um that that's why i sound the way i do um okay so i get this right a lot of us deal with depression here is a video i believe he's made god in my depression god in depression he you know i mean apparently i'm gonna leave that between him and his god i just kind of wanted to notice that so he's got that going on. He thought, I didn't, wouldn't have noticed. If you watch the rest of the video, I'm going to skip on here, and you'll see this is the actual response video of him. But if you watch it, I, I've never seen the guy before. I wouldn't have noticed he was <laughs> he was down or despondent, you know, had he not prefaced his video with, you know, letting us know that he was down. So I, I do appreciate that. I, I've There's part of me, my, part of me I've considered that in my response, and first of all, in your response, if you decide to go, look at this guy's channel or anything uh, don't let's be nice first of all <laughs> there's a couple of things one is that you know one is that he did he did this video and if as far as i went and looked in his comments and they were all his his whose own viewers those people who have watched his video were up against him he he it was just like they were blah, 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 and he's like oh well you know you know what i mean i didn't have to go defend myself he had to go defend his god consider uh, liking and subscribing if you find this content helpful so with that i think he's done he just i think shills my channel talks yeah, about yeah. Um, subscribing to his channel or the normal something yeah. that happens to you i don't know consider uh, liking and subscribing if you find this content helpful and edifying for yourself you know, um, Sean Alexander, the point Sean Alexander points out in the chat, he says, uh, I'm going to switch. Um, he says in the chat, I really hope he is getting real mental health help and not just relying on praying. Me too, brother. Um, you know what I mean? So let, let's go ahead here and, and I'll. So we're going to look at a video that is made by, well, an atheist. Um, and he's doing, I guess, a series about what he calls i guess the series is um the shame of christianity i think and it's just the shame of christianity one the shame shame of christianity two the shame of christianity three um and i think he's trying to go through the bible and unfortunately it seems that his point is to try his absolute hardest to make God out to be evil. Listen to what he has to say. I guess we're beginning from Genesis. Look, first, I want to mention that I use the mm -hmm. NIV version of the Bible found on BibleGateway.com. Unless there's some rhetorical point I'm trying to make which requires a more ancient version, this is the one I plan to use. It is, of course, the inerrant word of God, so it shouldn't matter which one I use. Okay, I want to stop right there and say I do appreciate him showing this. Um, it was nice of him to... Uh, I mean, because oftentimes they'll miss content. And... and, and some people be like, you need to look back into this and translate this and ancient translations and all this. I'm like, no, no, that, this is the best selling Bible in the entire world. It's good enough for everybody to go down and preach out of. It's good enough for me to just pick up and go through, you know? And so I appreciate that he let me, he kept that in there. Here we go. I don't know if he's going to go through the whole episode or not. <laughs> Now, as we all know, the first couple of chapters of the Bible are all about creation. In this episode, we're going to talk about the book of Genesis, chapter 1, which is a wide-angle view of God creating the heavens and the earth and the creatures, the waters, and then finally, man. Of course, there's nothing evil God monster-like about this, is there? Well, technically. Actually. Absolutely. Yes. It's just hard to see. But if you look, you'll find it. If this God is real and is responsible for creating all the creatures on earth, then he created a world where an uncountable number, certainly well into the trillions, of creatures who have existed throughout time have had to survive. 
alive by killing and eating other creatures. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill in one form or another since the dawn of time. The perfect opener to the book of death. To the book of death. Very dramatic. Um, so, first off, yeah, I, I let him, I'll let him like speak and say his piece and make his point before I stop the video. Uh, I think it would be irritating um, for you guys to, for me to stop it every time he makes a uh, some wrong statement or untrue claim about the the bible okay. and who got it and who but got it this. seems to me that his objection well i guess it would be unfair to say that it's an objection because really he just hates god it's just that's his whole <laughs> We should have like atheist bingo going on here, and you know the hates God thing, man. You'd have got that. That should be the center square. I hate God. Damn you, God! Y'all can see the fist, right? I just sit around masturbating, thinking about how bad God is. <laughs> Good morning, Son of Fire. I hope that wasn't the first thing you ever heard me say. Hating God is a bit silly. Yeah, I hate God, right? So obvious, but clearly, I hate God. The point in my video that I'm watching, and he's all right. Let me let, let him let me let him speak a little bit more, okay? point right he said even with god cre creating he calls it the book of death but even in god creating he said god's already done something evil because he created and but he stresses you know did he do anything wrong maybe a little bit <laughs> if you look at it hard enough and i think that's one of the problems well okay i get that is that shut up chris let him uh, sir you are looking at this trying to force the, your understanding of what wrong and right means of what evil is on to god and you are willing to read as much into i mean it okay real quick i want to kind of point out there's two things two ways that people interpret the bible one way is that people read it christians primarily they read it and they like make it all soft and fuzzy you know what i mean they make it like nice and sweet and they somehow find a beautiful message out of it and then other people like me read it and we read it for what it is a bloody book of texts of hate and just violence and incest and all this wonderful stuff and yet so whenever whenever this happens here's what happens two people pick up a bible and one of us has to really do what he's saying really kind of look hard for the thing you know really stretch to make their point of view the other one doesn't their point of view really sticks out let's go back and see what he's saying here the, your understanding of what wrong and right means did he do anything wrong maybe a little bit if you look at it hard enough and i think that's one of the problems is that uh, sir you are looking at this trying to force the, your understanding of what wrong and right means of what evil is on to god and you are willing to read as much into i mean it here it comes. sounds like you're reading this right into genesis 1 1 or 1 2 that uh god had maliciously uh desire to create in order to put things to death and that's just not true well well yeah uh actually it kind of is or create cr created animals it doesn't really say in there that animals had to eat animals it doesn't i don't think it says that maybe it does i don't think so but it does get to that eventually it says that and i even address that in my video i'm like listen it may not have done it here, but later on, if you're going to say that the fall of man is what caused animals to know death and murder, and you know, there's somewhere out in the world, there's a right now, right now, there's going on some small, beautiful furry creature is getting viciously torn up by like a bear or some other creature. Right now, as we speak, it's got to be happening. Some fish somewhere is swimming along going, oh my, oh my, he's trying to get away. He's terrified. He's terrified. It's sheer terror as some other creature is gobbling him up right now, thousands and thousands of times over. And you're going to say, this individual, or Christians, Christians say, the reason why this happens is because the fall of man, man did something wrong. So trillions, literally, if we're talking, you know, the evolution of all the things, trillions of creatures were made and have to kill and eat each other because man did something wrong. That's what that's what the Bible is saying. That's how bad man is, you know? And that's kind of where I'm going. Now, all right, so let me get let him get back to his thing. But again, I don't know why I guess I don't know. I mean, obviously animals, we we all love our animals. Um, but it's wrong, he says, uh, that the they have to be created and then they have to eat each other to stay alive. The biblical perspective is 
And uh, now I just want to hold on. My, my point is it, what what I don't know if he's getting it or not. Is that if you're an all powerful God and you have a choice between creating creatures that can just absorb the light from the sun, the energy from the sun, and not have to other cre- eat other creatures, or a God that eat you know makes the world. If you make that choice. Right? We're not talking about evolution. We're not talking about my beliefs. We're talking about their beliefs. Right? If you have a God that makes that choice to where he's going to force every animal, most every animal, to kill and eat other animals in order to survive, that's horrific whenever he could have made it. That's my point. That's the point of the video. Uh, I don't know if he's getting it or not. Good morning, Logan. Nice to join you guys. New people. Don't forget to subscribe. Love to have you with us. Uh, catch more of my crazy. I do the live show uh, here on the Daily Atheist Morning Show. I also drop li- uh, videos uh, exposing the Bible. And this is what this guy has done for those of you who are just showing up. He saw the first video of my evil God monster of Abraham series. And uh, he did a response video to it. And we're just kind of going through it. So it's very, very nice of you guys to join us on this. Uh, I'm going to let him talk some more. Um, I'm going to be telling you from what the reformed position for any of his objections so you know in the future i'm going to and that's fair on his part he's going to just like i did whenever i said i'm going to be using the niv bible and this is why if i need to use an older version for my rhetoric i will but don't go telling me to go use an older version and learn because most people don't right but in his defense he's telling me he's using like a new reformed version be answering from the reformed perspective from uh the reformed theology and so um his assertion that um, animals had to, from the beginning, eat other animals is not true because there was no death prior to the fall. There was no death. But even if, let's just say he's, he's right about this. Let's just say, let's say, for the sake of argument. For the okay. sake of argument. Let's say he's right. What's your point? What are you... Accusing? Okay. That, let me... Well, now, this is kind of... A, I hate to that I've already preempted it. I... Apparently, he missed the point, right? The point was, just like I just explained, if you're a god and you're an omnipresent, omni-everything god, and you have a choice between creating creatures that have to kill and eat each other versus create creatures who could just simply get light from all their energy from the sunlight, you know? You've chosen, he woke up and chose violence that day, you know? That's the point. Accusing God of evil? Yes, on what basis do you even define evil on an atheistic worldview? Okay, all right, I gotta, I gotta let the guy go. I gotta let him go, because, I mean, I, every time I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I gotta let him go. On what basis do you even define evil on an atheistic worldview, a naturalistic, materialistic worldview? You cannot, there, there is no, no such thing as evil, or good, or right, or wrong. It's just... Your own opinion, how you feel about it. You can say something it's is really perfect. perfect. You can say something is uncomfortable to you, something you don't like, but that's as far as any moral claim you're going to be able to do. Uh, to- so basically, atheists have no because we have you know basically where he's getting into is because we have no God, we have no moral center, and we can't determine what is right or wrong without God telling us that bring goes because you can't make an oral, oral argument and i would like for you if you're going to do a whole series on this you need to make a video at least attempting to try to ground um some sort of uh justification for the moral claims that you make you are making moral assertions establish the basis on which you do that from the christian perspective god is the moral foundation for all things his goodness his very nature his law, which is a reflection of his nature, tells us what is evil and what is wrong. Okay. All right. So I got this, guys. Here's here's the thing. Let's individual. If you're watching, brother man, um, you get all your good and evil. You get a, you everything you know about good and evil and right and wrong. You learn from the Bible. What I would like you, if you can, if you do respond or if you see this video, give me a list of the things that you learn from the Bible. What's good and what's right and what's wrong, what's evil and what's not. I mean, literally, give me a list. Is it right and wrong to, or right or wrong or evil to cheat on your taxes? Is it right or wrong? How do you determine that? Does it say that in the Bible? Is it right or wrong to, I don't know, take female children as sex slaves? It does say that in your Bible, by the way.
It does. And then they get the whole art. Before they go on, they also get the whole thing. Listen, oh, no, that's the Old Testament. I mentioned in the Old Testament that it, it does say to take uh, underage girls or uh, girls as sex slave. It says that. Now, you're going to go, Jesus is the new covenant, and Jesus is this, and Jesus is that. And since Jesus sacrificed himself, we don't have to do. And that, that Old Testament doesn't mean crap. That's where we're going to go. This is where it always goes. It's like the bingo. Bingo. Did Jesus wash away our sins or God's sins? And so, again, to his point, how does this guy go through his day? How does this his day and know right from wrong because there's so many things that are not covered in the Bible. It does not say that you can't go beat up a, a security guard at a holy site. It doesn't say, matter of fact, the Old Testament encourages it. It tells them to go kill the old men outside the temple in one instance. Whenever I mean, you know what I mean? So where does this guy get his morals from the Bible? So Another example, it would be, listen, dude, I'm going to tell you how you and I, if you're watching, brother man, how you and I both get our morals and our, just, our, just our basis of right and wrong. Right and wrong turns to good and evil. Let's just start with that, okay? Right and wrong. Is it right to stick water ice trays in the refrigerator? Well, full of water. Well, if it depends on your objective. If you want ice, then no, it's not wrong. It is indeed right to do so. But if you want water, then yes, it is wrong. Okay? So now just take those to the extreme. Yes, now you have a poison and it only works in ice form. So you have to freeze it so you can kill your husband. Now is it evil? All you're doing is freezing ice. You know, I mean, we put those labels on it and society, we as a society, as our societies determine. I mean, the way to hear this guy tell it, we walk around with no form of right or wrong because we don't have God to, to lead us. But Jesus, that's, sorry, Jesus. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I was raised Christian, you know, so those, those but you see what I mean? Uh, this notion that because we don't follow their God, well, man, there's so many people out there that don't follow their God. How does the world not just freaking implode to hear this guy? How do we have any morals at all? Again, the Bible that he's talking about doesn't have morals by our standards. So, and, and he's going to bash my balls on that. He's going to give me the, oh, you're not a God. You can't determine what's good and evil. Go, only God does that. Mm, right. We know let me catch up on the chapter. Well, I'll, I'll do that while he talks. Is wrong. It is evil. And it, it, how do I know that though? What keeps me from going around and murdering people? What, right? Is it just the law? Is it? Is that the only thing that keeps me from? Come on, brother, work harder than that. Use your brain. It is evil of the highest kind. Good morning, Logan Fisher. Thank you for joining us. Michael Bell, let's see. The sun gives us life, also gives us cancer. That's true. But it doesn't have to, see? The sun could give us everything we need. It could, I mean, neutrinos, actually, we could get neutrinos. We could live, if God wanted to, we could live off neutrinos. Why would we want to do that? Because we can get neutrinos whether we're underwater. We get neutrinos whether we're... Um, um, hold our breath whether the sun is on the other side of the planet it doesn't matter we always get so it's not like we would ever starve to death right he could have done that and then we wouldn't have to hurt nobody no 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 his 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 like first reaction was murder death kill to the bloodiest extreme that was his first reaction horrific each creature has to eat each other now of course i don't believe in god right i believe in science and objectively there's this chain of reasons why lions eat bambi Right, I know why lions eat Bambi. I, as an L, as an intelligent creature, determine: Do I want to continue that cycle, or do I I want to eat vegetation and not continue inflicting that harm on other creatures? Now, I can't make all creatures out there not eat each other. That's just ridiculous to even think I could. But I can, you know, just break the cycle. You know what I'm saying? And I do as much as I can. I still eat meat. I'm a bad person. I still eat meat. I don't actually. But that's the whole thing. I don't actually go killing harm other animals i don't harm animals myself to do it if i did then i'd be a complete vegan vegetarian kind of right that's just how most of us all are if we had to go out and kill our own cows it gets complicated uh, sk brain dead atheist thank you for joining us always love um somebody to come in and immediately go ad hominem thank you so let me let this guy go on but he can't say that he, he can 
try to say it, but he is stepping into my worldview in order to make a claim, a moral claim. He has to step into the Christian worldview from a naturalistic, materialistic perspective. You don't have that. So I would like to see that. I do not. I do not. Again, I, I don't have to have Christianity could simply not exist and I could still be a moral person and know right from wrong and not to kill people. I appreciate. Uh, thank you for playing, though. <laughs> You're going to do a whole series on this. But that's what I have to say about what he's saying so far. It doesn't make any sense. I could throw it right back at him. Aren't you an evolutionist? <laughs> do you not believe that you are the production Yes, I do. Of this evil process? Yes, I do. You are the production of millions of years from your... Well, see, I'm... I'm yeah, yeah, I do. I agree. Yeah. Your perspective yeah. of evil billions. and evil and evil. No, I already explained that, though. Ours is not... It's not, it's not a matter of evil. Uh, animals in the wild aren't generally known for cruelty, necessarily. Um, they generally kill and eat because they have to, because they must, Right? And so it's a science and evolutionary thing. Again, I don't put moral judgments on a lion for eating a, a thing. That's that's what it does. But creatures that are smarter to make the difference, that's different, right? And and we make that that decision. Eating the sun, that's blasphemy. Only the sun is... <laughs> There, are, these are not accusations of evil. Biblical text itself demonstrates this. Yeah, I mean, we're re we're reading it. Of, obviously, I'm taking the Bible and I'm reading it objectively as a modern day non Christian believer. It's not being filtered through some priest, right? I'm just reading it like somebody who's not a believer and going, "Damn, what kind of God is this?" You see what I mean? That's, I mean, I state that right kind of from the beginning. Now, I do appreciate if you're watching, um, brother man, that uh, or when you watch that. Your patience with me for pausing so often. On evil. You're just the production of that. Yes. Well, but it's not evil. It's just it? evolution. I don't understand even from your own perspective. He could have just stopped at the word understand. Bad Chris. Damn it, Chris. Sorry. Perspective. How this makes any sense. It's survival of the fittest, right? It's survival of the fittest. So That is a wonderful point. Thank you. Thank you, Ember. Ember says, if people weren't moral before Jesus or Moses, or if there was no morality before then, if they had no guide for what was moral before then, then how could Yahweh condemn the people before that to the flood? Let me read that right. Let me read that right. To, to everything. Yeah. How they, how, I mean, yeah, there was wickedness right from the beginning. And whenever you go to chapter four of the Bible, um, and of course, at this point, we haven't had Moses in the Ten Commandments or none of that business. But, you know, Cain killed Abel. That was bad. Well, okay, that was bad. You know? And in that chapter, it even says whenever God is lashing out at Cain for being jealous of Abel because Abel did less work and got more praise from God. God is like, when you know, whenever you do wrong, when you do right, don't you, you know, get the glory of God. But whenever you do wrong, sin is crouching at your door. Right, so they keep your these people don't know how to keep their story straight. Uh, how are we? How was he supposed to know what sin was if he hadn't heard of the Ten Commandments or the six hundred and eight commandments, or if he hadn't heard of Jesus? And why would you punish him for those things? And why would why would you punish him with long life and many children, and not having to work the ground, and yet punish uh, for killing his brother, and then for Eve, all she did was eat the fruit and give it to Adam which she wasn't there whenever Adam was told not to eat it. And he was there when it was given to her. So he should have stopped her. But she was punished really bad. Lie, birth and all this. And she's subservient to her man. You know, isn't that kind of stupid? It's really just men wanting to keep their oppression of women. So the strongest get to determine what is right and what is wrong. Right? Because they can enforce their own view, their own opinion on what is right and wrong on others. Yeah, it's just he's contradicted himself already and he's put himself in a spot. That all I've said <laughs> all I've said so far in the video is that well maybe he's watched. I'll let him go. That leaves him go. unable to justify any of what he's saying. Um especially when you're going to charge God with evil. Let's start with man. Start charging him with evil and make a basis to do so. Let's wind it a bit and have had to survive by killing and eating other creatures murder that's all i've said that you know that's all i've said i haven't contradicted myself all i've said so far is that 
God created, that based on their story, God created these animals and chose to have them kill and eat each other. That's all I've said. There's no, if you can point the contradiction out there, let me know. I mean, maybe I'm just missing it. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, in one form or another since the dawn of time. The perfect opener to the book of death. And it's really perfect in its insidiousness. It talks about creation in a manner some people see as divine and beautiful. And see, this is the whole thing. That's what I'm talking about earlier. One of us can go, look how hideous this. Just read it. Sit here and read this about how this says it's got to do this. Now, I do say that you have to interpret it that way. It does say it created the peop the creatures. You have to go, okay, and then they eat each other. You know, it doesn't say in there they created them and they didn't have to eat each other and they, you know, they just lived forever and didn't have to have any problems. They just created. I, so I can get that. That's a tiny bit. But this whole one of us has to really stretch to make the Bible, especially this first chapter is kind of a little bit on the weak side. But you start getting into it like the next chapter and the chapter after that, and then it just starts getting on. And it's really hard to defend this God monster at all. But there's no mention of how, in order for any and all these creatures to survive, they must partake in the slaughter of, and or consumption of, the flesh of other animals. I mean, there's this big ball of energy right there in the sky, and an all-knowing, almighty God could have made it to where every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live. But no. In all his wisdom and judgment, in this, his perfect creation, we must kill or scavenge on other living things to survive. Wholesale slaughter on a scale which is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend. Exhibit A. <laughs> is he praying? Is he not looking at the screen? Uh, what's going on here? I, I, now, I got to be honest, guys. This was about as far as I watched earlier. I, didn't, I don't think I watched even this far the first time. Uh, so what the hell is going I mean, maybe he's, I don't know, maybe he's texting somebody. It looks like he's praying. <laughs> He can't in handle his, the images. Every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live. But no. In all his wisdom and judgment, in this, his perfect creation. That's fantastic. In it? Philosoph philosophical gamer? That's right. That's exactly what you are. It is the inception of atheism. We must kill or scavenge on other living things to survive. Wholesale. <laughs> My viewers are like, gee, I wonder how Chris is going to shove his evil god monster of uh, Abraham series in our face today. <laughs> well... <laughs> I found a new way, my friends. Slaughter on a scale which is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend. Dear Jesus, pray protect me from this evil atheist. <laughs> Let me not hear his words. <laughs> I think that's the reason why they used to bind the mouths of people back in the day, because they would actually speak reason to them, and they'd talk them out of doing whatever they were doing. So that's why they bound, bound their mouths and called it like they'd speak spells or witchcraft, and that's what got them out. But really, they were just talking sense into them. Exhibit A, the first piece of damning evidence which I use to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham is book one, chapter one of its own story. Oh, what's going on? Um, okay, so ball of energy. Everything I've said about his moral claims just stand, so I'm not going to reiterate myself a hundred times. Um, but he mentioned something about a ball in the sky and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, sir, we are not Mormons. Um, we do not believe that matter has always existed and that you could essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be to create the earth life whatever it is that you want to do that's a mormon belief so I don't know what you can make talking about a uh, oh oh, oh i was talking about oh my god how dumb can these people be you didn't hear that y'all didn't hear that I mean, I was just talking about the sun. I was talking about the sun. I wasn't talking about us making something. Right? We all covered that, right? All I was talking about was getting energy from the sun. The sun, and then I broke it all the way down to, if you wanted to, uh, you could actually just, you didn't even have to get sunlight, perhaps. God could have made it to where it was neutrinos, which passed through the earth and through the water. So any creature anywhere could not have to worry about energy. He could always get it. That, that from the sun, no. I'm just saying, all I'm saying is God could have made creatures that got their energy from the sun, like, like plants. But without the plants having to get it from, you know. Um, do, do, do you guys see the disconnect? Or am I just crazy? Let me just kind of rewind just a little bit. Shame of essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be yeah, yeah. Uh, hold on let me go back comprehend exhibit a the first piece of where every creature simply needed to absorb sunlight to live but no in all his wisdom and 
maybe he was just praying and didn't realize I was. I even said absorb sunlight. I couldn't have been. I don't understand where he gets where he goes from. Me talking about animals being able to absorb sunlight. Now I didn't say that neutrino thing in that video, but in real life here I did say it. But ball of energy. Everything I've said about his moral claims just stand. So I'm not going to reiterate myself a hundred times. Um, but he mentioned something about a ball in the sky and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, sir, we are not. That's not what I said. I said there's a ball in the sky and you could get the energy from it. And now he's going to go off in Mormon. I have no idea. If you're an ex-Mormon, maybe you might understand. Clarify in the chat for me what the hell this guy is talking about. And if you can, especially in 128 characters or less. <laughs> how the hell did he get like from solar power to Mormon god planet creating stuff? <laughs> I don't know. Drugs are bad, man. Drugs are bad. Mormon. Um, we do not believe <laughs> that matter has always existed and that you could who's we do do mormons believe that matter has always existed i mean i kind of do from the yeah i mean it just depends on science i would go ask the scientists mormons believe that god organized matter well wouldn't they all believe that i mean or maybe the other ones don't believe in matter I don't know. Um, most of our dogs are rescues, by the way. We rescue. Go rescue a dog. They'll rescue you back. Yes. Yeah, so back to this guy. Let's get back onto this guy. Let him essentially rearrange matter into how you want it to be to create the earth, life, whatever it is that you want to do. That's a Mormon belief. So you can make a um, the shame of Mormonism, if you like, I guess. But uh, God created from nothing. He created by his word. Uh, by his very words, he created. You should know this. This is Genesis one two, so or Genesis one one, or rather. Um, so okay, all right, all right. So I'm, I'm going to stretch his brain just a little bit. So let's do, go with that. He created. Yes, God created. At that point, brother man, did you hear? Did you hear down there storm? At that point, you could have God could have created animals that got the, all their energy from the sun. Period. That's it. <laughs> so, other than that, he's just still talking about the animal thing. Still no basis for that. There's no basis for that. Right. Because, the all right, so we guys, we, we get it. We get it. We don't have to keep beating that dead horse. Back. Exhibit A, the first piece of damning evidence, which I use to justify calling it the evil god monster of Abraham, is Book 1, Chapter 1 of its own story. Book 1, Chapter 1. Some theists may try to equivocate this point and claim creatures didn't need to eat or kill at this point in the story. Which he did exactly that at the beginning. And then he goes, okay, okay, well, let's say we didn't, they didn't have to. All right, but he did that. You saw him do that. Which makes their argument seem even less plausible. But really... I could let them have that one. Okay, so no animal had to kill to survive when it was all created. But maybe they wanted to argue it wasn't until the fall of man where that changed. And therefore, it's man's fault, not God's fault. Fine. So we literally went through all the animal thing that you spent, like, three <laughs> no. minutes talking about? No. Only to tell us, oh, well, if you hold this perspective, okay, then that doesn't apply. It's, um, no, I was actually acquiescing to your point whenever you said that in the beginning they didn't have to kill each other. That's all. I was just saying, okay, brother, if that's the case. All right, so that it does kind of say the rest, but it's still just, if you, hopefully he'll let the rest of the video play. Because I, I don't, let me explain. I even explain it to him. He just, I just don't think he's going to get it. You could have just started off with that. Uh, saved us three minutes, but um, <laughs> it's, uh, I guess I'm glad to listen to your perspective either way. Um, although I would be amiss if I didn't say that you have no right, you have no right to bring any charge of anything against God. And you stand in a position, um, where to be frank with you, um, that I just want to say I'm a human being on this planet right now that exists and therefore I have the right to defend myself against his evil god monster. Do you not agree? Show of hands. <laughs> Good morning, Pavel D. Nice to have you. Uh, I have no right. I know, that's kind of, uh, I have no right. Because I don't worship a god. I have no right to make any claims of what's moral or not moral. I, because I don't worship a god. I have no, no keel, no, no rudder to tell me right from wrong. And I have no right to judge his god. 
I wonder what he would say about the gods of the Aztecs or the gods of any of these other people who did, they did things, was it the Aztecs? I think it's the, yeah, Aztecs. The ones that were decapitating people and rolling their heads. How, how would he feel about their gods? <laughs> God's wrath abides on you, present tense, and I hope, and I will bring, Let me just have that. no right, you have no right, to bring any charge of anything against God. I can, listen, if I can sit over and go, that person is doing something wrong based on what society has taught me is right and wrong as we've already discovered. Why can't I say that about God? And I say that about his God. Why I say that because his God is followed by billions of people. So you really got to hold that God to that kind of standard. That's the, the, they're thinking that's the last person you have to hold to that kind of standard. No, that's the first freaking person you have to hold to that standard. But as I've made my claim before, if you know, if you follow me along and you know what I talk about, this guy's God was written by a bunch of desert people who hated city people, city life, and they had their old superstitions, their old ways, and they oppressed women, and they, that's, that's what they got. And we get the Bible from that. And they try to distance themselves, Old Testament, New Testament, well, fine, the New Testament. I even had God in my chat giving me the whole, the New Testament, blah, 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 blah. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. I don't really know where he got that from the video we were watching. I'm like, yeah, but if Jesus is God, then that means he unalived to babies. That means that God did, or Jesus did all these things that the Bible says God did. And God does a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> In the Old Testament. I'm just saying. You know, there's a reason why they separate themselves from it. Um, as I've said before, or I just said before in this show, but I really just realized today, Jesus isn't washing away our sins. Jesus is washing away the Old Testament God's sins. Because before Jesus came, he was a mean, evil monster. After that, he's a wonderful, loving kind understanding creature that will burn you in a pit of fire for all eternity for the slightest of offenses but still i mean peace and love and mercy right they're like jesus loves you unconditionally well there are a few conditions <laughs> uh let me get back onto this guy though let's see what he got to say and you stand in a position um where to be frank with you um that god's wrath abides on you as intense and i hope and I will be praying um, that. Oh, don't pray for me. Don't pray for me. It, it, it itches. It does. It, it does. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Not to that God monster. You will not find yourself believing these words that you're uttering at the end of your life. I pray and will be praying that you actually. Isn't that fantastic? One of the things I argue, listen, man, if you, their God, first of all, is very for not very forgiving when it comes to doing things wrong. It's evil is crouching at your door all the time, ready to just drop you straight to hell at every. So you go along, you live your life, you do great, you do great, you do great. And then one day you just kind of slip, you know, and have a, I don't know, an affair with a porn star while your wife's at home with your newborn child. And all of a sudden you're going to hell, you know, all of your good wasted. If you did good. Anyway, let me let this guy finish. Apparently he has time to go. I mean, I thought he was about done. but Come to a place of repentance and you turn to Christ for mercy. The very God you are accusing of evil. Why would I have to if he weren't evil? What have I done wrong? I mean, I haven't. I mean, that he knows of. All I'm doing is talking, putting out my deal about his God. I mean, I'm just saying words. What have I done wrong? Outside of not believing in him or speaking. I mean, did I touch myself? Not today. That you know of. <laughs> Hooked on a book. All right, let's see what this guy here has to say. Let's rewind it a bit. And then Where that changed. And therefore, it's man's fault, not God's fault. Fine, done. Now, going on that premise, it's still the work of an evil God monster. But now he's even more cruel than we thought before, because now the creatures God has said are under man's domain have to kill and consume the flesh of each other to live. Because man did something wrong. One man and one woman, in fact. All the other creatures of the earth for all time have to suffer. All the other creatures had to suffer. They did nothing wrong that we know of that the text reveals. They did nothing wrong. They have to suffer these horrible murder, death, kill deaths. And yet he doesn't see that as bad. 
horrible deaths to feed each other or horrible yeah horrible deaths to feed each other and or to have to kill each other to survive really that's not the creation i would think would be born of a peaceful loving god quite the opposite okay so there we get to it right the last words he said this is not what i think of course would be what did the you creation think it was about? of a loving and good god yeah that that's all you have is your own opinion you My don't have a basis opinion and evaluation of the book claim. um <laughs> go back back fan come on man or a moral i think would be yeah. the creation of a loving and good god that that's all you have that's yeah, well, the whole is your own opinion you don't have a basis to make this a moral claim um or a moral argument nothing at all but i'm glad you clarified it because he says I don't have the right. Am I right? The, I mean, so this gentleman here says I don't have the right. He has proclaimed it thus, and therefore I do not. Is that, is that what's happening? That seems like that's what's happening. There we go. It, -um -pum -pum -pum. It's just your own opinion. Um, yeah, that's, that, that's indeed it. That's the whole series. <laughs> My into my opinion is I interpret the Bible for you as the purpose the perspective of somebody who's picking up the Bible. Yeah, you read that at the you saw that at the beginning of the the, the video. <laughs> so it bears no weight. It bears no weight to anybody except to you. Uh, so I'm, if you want to actually reach people again, make at least an attempt. I know you won't be able to do it. I know you cannot do it. Many an atheist has tried. Okay no atheist can make a moral uh justification for their claim um so now i first of all whenever whenever i first saw this video rather than me going coming up with my own things reasons as to why examples which i clearly went through earlier as to why atheists can have their own moral come up with their own morals i i originally went started to go find um sam um Harris, he's got a really good speech he did where he talks about, you know, knowing what's objectively good and what's objectively bad. If pain, eternal pain all over your body, and that is like fire burning all over you, we will call that bad. Okay, it's over here. We can determine that's bad. Objectively, we can all determine that's bad. And then over here on the right, you've got like, you know, in a, the best of comfort, total orgasmic body. We can tell that's good. And everything we do is somewhere between those points and we can objectively go yeah that's good or bad you know that's you know we don't need we don't need a god to tell us that but it would it would be interesting to see you try um he should watch the rest other of the than videos. that not much else to say except back to the animal thing um back to the animal thing yeah you know it's unfortunate that death came into the world through one man adam as romans 5 tells us but but here's the thing as romans 5 Here's the thing, though. God set that meter. He's the one that said, when man broke that rule, what happened? When that one man broke that rule, God, this good, loving creature, he could have been merciful. Was he merciful, people? Was he merciful? No, there was no mercy. The man broke the rule, according to this guy, and bam, animals had to die all over the world. No mercy. That's freaking hideous. It's like that God was just sitting there waiting for them to do something wrong. They didn't know right from wrong, or if they did, they just figured it out because of the apple. And now they have the knowledge for good and evil. Let him finish his his thing. That he was our federal head. Good morning, Jeremiah. Nice to have you with us this morning. And that sin doesn't just affect animals. It doesn't just affect man. Sin affects everything. The reasons that we have. Why, though? Why does sin, what, what sins do animals do? Well, we judge them by their sin. Do animals get into heaven? If they don't get into heaven, what's a sin to animal? Do they go to hell? Right? Well, I mean, where, how far do you carry this crazy? You know, at what point do you go, mm, you know, <laughs> I'm just kind of making this shit up as I go along. Atheists, at least we go, you know, <laughs> I don't know. This is a bunch of shit as far as I know. It's all a bunch of shit. <laughs> That's all I got. But but these guys here, they make it up. And it wouldn't be so bad, but they legislate based on their beliefs. They hurt other people based on their beliefs. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? So they hurt other people based on this book and these beliefs. So is that morally good or bad? 
can I, as an atheist, not see and not be able to judge this as being morally good or bad because I don't believe in his God, which is stupid to say. Let me let him go, though. I, shut up, Chris. Uh, let him go. Natural disasters, even. From hurricanes to uh, earthquakes to volcanic eruptions, all of these are a uh, product of the fall. These, This is sin entering into the world and stretching to every part of the world. And so, yeah, nobody likes that, that now death has to exist, that now even diseases exist, sicknesses, uh, viruses, all these things have now come, um, are able to be uh, formed into the kind of viruses or bacteria, or whatever it is that they are, is because of the fall. So there's no, no question about that. I would agree with you. That it's that we don't like death. But hmm, I would agree with you. And then he, he almost went there. He almost went there. Yeah. <laughs> but this is God accomplishing his will. He is glorifying himself. But the, but the point is, what if this God isn't real? And we're just looking at the text written by a bunch of people who lived 2,000 years, 4,000 years ago in the freaking desert. And they, they had diseases and they were angry and they were sick and they were stressed out and they were pissed off at the people who lived in the cities because they were doing it. I mean, right? What if? Just pretend. Stretch your mind and imagine. Because that's how it reads. Right? But just stretch your mind and try to imagine. Right? And to think that we have no moral compass or god i mean from the beginning from before creation he chose to create and not only to create but to enter into that creation and die for the sins of a particular people to show the to demonstrate the range of his glory to demonstrate his mercy as ephesians 1 tells us to um uh, that we're vessels of mercy romans 9 ephesians 1 he just he we are expressions of his mercy grateful great grateful recipients of his mercy that which we were ill deserving of and his wrath on those who would disobey the gospel that would um cast away and treat as so now he's going to talk about the wrath and go and describe i think i haven't seen this before we're seeing this together but he's going to describe the wrath of his the wrath of the evil God monster that I have made it out to be. He's going to go describe that wrath for us now. His mercy, grateful, great, grateful recipients of his mercy, that which we were ill-deserving of, and his wrath on those who would disobey the gospel that would um, cast away and treat as worthless the blood of the Son of God, that those... Such people will enter into his wrath if they die in that state and God's power and God's justice and his wrath will be demonstrated in them and his goodness and uh, mercy on the vessels of mercy that he prepared beforehand for glory. Well, yeah, horrible deaths to feed each other and or to have to kill each other to survive. Really. That's not the creation I would think would be born of a peaceful, loving God. Quite the opposite, in fact. That sounds like a world created by someone who enjoys pain and suffering and death. Exactly the type of world the evil God monster would create. Although, I will continue to go through the Bible to continue to exemplify my point. This alone, I feel, is enough. When, look, when looked at in the proper perspective, I gotta admit, compared to all the rest of the episodes, this one is really kind of a stretch. It was really kind of hard to find the, you know, this is evil part about it. You know, and even then... Does God make them eat each other at the beginning? It just depends on whose interpretation you get. This is probably the weakest episode in the entire thing. The rest of them, I'd really enjoy to see his views on them. If he could speed up or something. Perspective, this clearly justifies why I call it the evil God monster of Abraham. Why you call it? Because it's sure. what you think. That That's not objective. That's just subjective. That There's no reason to even consider what you're saying. Um, because... Again, you haven't grounded any of these things in a way as to make it meaningful rather than your own opinion. Um, God's creation was good. God's goodness was demonstrated in his creation in the Garden of Eden. In really peacefulness that man 
He's got to watch the other episodes, man. This guy, he's not watching the other episodes. I haven't seen any more videos. Maybe he hasn't made any yet. Hold on. And, and create, he's almost uh, the other creature. I really think that as he's talking here, like earlier, it looked like he was praying. I really think he may have been. And I really think here, like as he's closing his eyes and thinking, I think he's like calling upon the Holy Spirit or some business in his brain. Check it out. Right? Am I wrong, guys? Is that, Maybe it's just me. To even consider what you're saying. Um, because again you haven't grounded any of these things in a way as to make it meaningful rather than your own opinion um god's creation was good god's goodness was go. demonstrated him. in his creation in the garden of eden god's goodness in the peacefulness goes. that man and create uh the other creatures had in the harmony of creation <laughs> In the harmony and of God's creation. goodness and relationship and fellowship. He really needs to watch the next video. With his creation, those who he made in his very own image. The act of creation is a beautiful thing and is a is just a demonstration of God's goodness. He didn't have to create anything. He didn't have to. And yet he chose to. He chose to, and he didn't have to create anything that had to kill each other and die, but he chose to. And then he decided to blame that on an innocent man, on a man who knew better or, or didn't know better, didn't know the ramifications or repercussions of what he would do later on everybody else. Do you really think he would have done? I mean, I know this is all metaphor. We all know this is metaphor, but it's their metaphor right and and i should really kind of i could go back through and kind of pick out every time he says the word i i think or whatever because that's what he's doing he's i mean that's the whole premise of the video is i am showing my opinion um and when i say objectively i mean objective not within their realm of influence objectively not christian not a christian viewpoint right i mean where's the hard thing to believe in that i think i just speak too fast he probably and he chose to make us recipients of his goodness and his mercy. Really? That sounds like an awfully good God. It does an not. amazing God whose love. Not One of us really had to pick through that chapter to find the good loving mercy of it. Especially once I pointed out the obvious, oh, hey, wait. But hey. Neither of us. Between you, me, or anybody watching, we will never comprehend the fullness of God's love until eternity um so with that i think he's done he just i think shills my channel talks yeah, about uh, subscribing to his channel or the normal something yeah. bad happens to you i don't know consider uh, liking and subscribing if you find this content helpful so yeah that was i got burned i was burned man i tell you i was really i felt the pain i felt i had to put some aloe on after his <sighs> softball softball attempt at analyzing my video i think he did a very bad job um because his arguments are that i didn't have any arguments that it's just my opinion and that was that was what the whole video was about <laughs> that's what most of us are doing that's literally what he is doing is showing us that his opinion about my opinion so i mean that's that's all he got you know that's all he's got